this is a disaster, y'all. This didn't work out at all. Uh, clearly, that's not going to work, man. I guess we're starting over, y'all. I don't know. Again, I don't know any other way to fix this other than to start all over for the second time. So hey, what's up y'all? In here working on the uh, dash for the uh, 72 Plymouth Fury. I well, left you guys last. We were doing a lot of sanding and shaping and all of that kind of stuff. Getting our body lines all dialed in. And we were missing one important piece and that's the, the uh, defroster vents. And uh, some of you guys were thinking that's probably where we're going to screw this whole thing up. And I ain't going to lie, I'm one of those people. <laughs> uh, you know, you get all this to where it's looking right. All the body lines are looking good, and then now we gotta go in and start carving holes out in it. It's like, ugh. But what if I told you I already went ahead and did one? Look at that. Check it out, man. This is the driver's side, obviously, and uh, it's done already. I did it off camera. Look, this was pretty complex, y'all. I'm not gonna lie, this was a total pain because not only do we have the defroster vent itself, but this is the mounting holes where it bolts to the firewall right up against the windshield there. So we had to make this little area, you know, right here to where this is kind of a little recessed area down in here. And then of course we got the hole for the uh, bolt to go down into and had to do that on both sides. Now the fun part is we got to do the whole thing over here now. Now that first vent took me two hours, a solid two hours, man. If that don't deserve a subscribe, I don't know what does. So please hit the old subscribe button, man. We're working really hard over here, like I said. Uh, I'm going to take you guys through step by step exactly how we did this first vent over here. So let's just get started on it. Well, some of y'all were suggesting just cutting this out with a router, and that sounds great. But the problem with it is, is this part here is at an angle. It doesn't just go straight down. Uh, this all has to match up to the windshield a certain way, right? Or it's not going to work right. And that's the way it is. Is This, this is all at an angle. It's not just a, a straight down shot. You know, so getting in there with a the router, I'm not really sure how you'd go about doing that. Uh, but I think we got it here. We got our angles just right. And the way I did it was I just started out with the, uh, the mounting holes themselves. So I got me a drill with a little eighth inch bit on it. And that's where I'm going to start out. So these mounting holes need to be kind of mounted at an angle as well, just like how the vents are. So we just find our, find the hole here. Here's one. There we go. And the angle's about like that right there. It's not rocket science or anything, but yeah. The biggest thing there is to make sure we don't do too much of an angle because if we get too much of an angle, then the hole will be outside of the actual vent. You see what I'm saying? It's got to be down in the vent. It can't be out here too far one way or the other. So that's the main thing we got to watch out for on this part. You see what I'm saying here? Like if, if, if I was drilling this hole and the angle was too far, what we would do is we would end up popping out of the hole up here outside of where the, the actual vent will be. So we got to be careful with that. I think we'll be okay there. We got one more that's gonna be around over in this area here. Now here's the thing, you know, if, if we did accidentally get outside of our, our range, you know, where our, our vent's gonna be, it's not the end of the world. You just go back and patch up some more filler, it'll be fine. But that'll cause us a little more work, so we want to do, be careful of that. We don't want to cause more work if we don't have to. So now that I've got the two mounting holes, I'm going to start on the vent itself. What I want to do is I'm just going to kind of go around the parameter. I don't know. Can you guys see this? Uh, I just want to get some key points along the way, maybe one every inch or so. And that'll give us our outline of the vent from the top side, right? Once we poke through with all the, the drill bit holes. Thank you. 
Okay, so now that that's done, you can kind of see my outline through here of the vent. Remember, these out here are the mounting, the mounting bolt holes. That's where they'll start. That's these ones, right? One on each end, and then the vent in the middle. Uh, now, obviously, we got to come through and, and cut this part out. That's where things get really fun, and uh, we'll start out kind of small and then work our way bigger as we go. So when I did the other side, I used this right here to get started. Worked out pretty good, just kind of went through here, zipped it like this, kind of got my angle pretty close, because like we said, you know, that is at an angle, and then come through, just plunge it down in here, run it like this. When the two cuts meet, you just pick out the, uh, the big Bondo piece there and uh, chisel out your foam, and I'll show you some other tools that we're gonna use to kind of fine tune it once we get done with this. Now when I did the other side, I just kind of started off with some tape to kind of use as an outline. It'll get you pretty close. Just gonna outline our shape here, something like this. This will get us started, get us pretty close. All right, with everything outlined, let's get started cutting. Well, all right, I think we're off to a good start. What do y'all think? It's hard to believe that that started off as this, but it sure did exactly like this. So now that we've actually got our channel started, what we'll do is we'll come in and start kind of cleaning this up a little bit, making it a little bit bigger. The way I do it is, is I, let's see if I can find my tool. Here we go, got it hanging over here. Just a reamer bit on, a, on another die grinder. And what I'll do is I'll get in with this kind of ream this out just a little bit, kind of work it a little bit closer to the tape, but not quite. And then I'll switch over to another tool. We'll come in and do some from the other side. Man, I'm having a hell of a time keeping the camera up here for you guys. I'm sorry about that. So here we go. We are definitely well on our way. There's one of the bolt holes there with our little, see how that's got that little, that little spot in between that kind of separates the vent from the actual bolt hole there. It's got one on each side. See, we have to remake all of that. So I want to leave a little material there to separate the two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus now on just making this hole a little bit bigger. Now I think I could break this guy out here. This works pretty good, it's just like a Dremel. It's got this little attachment, I could change it out with those stuff. This is kind of a little drum sander type of an attachment. Works really good, man. It made light work at this other side. All right, now that we've got it pretty close, you know, pretty close to our tape, we're gonna switch over. This is some uh, 60 grit on just a paint stick. I've just got it glued to a paint stick. And now I could come through here and actually work it back to the tape. And then that will be our final line. You see what I mean about kind of sneaking up on it? You just wanna get it close with the power tools and then kind of dial it in by hand. That way you're not 
faced with a situation where you accidentally took off too much. Now, like I said, it ain't gonna matter. You can always go back and add some more. So it won't be the end of the world, but it is more work, right? You see how it's starting to, starting to come right back to the edge of that tape perfectly, nice and straight. That's exactly what we want. And we'll do that all the way around this whole thing. We're starting to kind of get back toward the, the tape on this side now. That's what we want. That's why our angle will be nice, nice through there. Uh, you see here, you see that? That's where I kind of got into it with the die grinder. I plunged my blade a little too deep, not a big deal. I uh, had the same exact thing happen on the other side over here. Uh, they'll sand out, and if not, we can add a little bit of the red glazing putty. Super easy. That'll fill it right up. So I'm telling y'all, man, you ain't got really nothing to worry about. You can't really mess this up too bad. I think we'll be okay with it. Now I'm going to switch over here to this other side and do the same thing. Just run my uh, 60 grit down through here and just work that back to that tape till we get a nice straight line. All right, so we've got the general shape heading in the right direction. We go ahead and peel our tape off. Yeah, so there you have it, the general outline of it. Right there with our bolt holes here, one here, and then that little bridge section that separates the vent from the bolt hole. It's all in place. So now we just need to dial it in with a little bit more mud. So just in case you're new to the videos, here's our Bondo brand filler. Got that at Walmart. Pretty, pretty easy stuff to use. We want a little bit of hardener here to go with it. You got to mix these two together for anybody that doesn't know. Get them thoroughly mixed up and then we can apply it. And I know we went over that in all the other videos, but just in case anybody's new and they might have missed it, this is what we're using. So I've got me a couple different spreaders. I've got a skinny one and even a skinnier one than that. And that ought to get us by. Let's go ahead and get some of this in there. I mixed it up pretty, pretty hot. In other words, it's got quite a bit of, of hardener in it. So we're gonna have to get a move on here. We ain't got time to be playing around. You guys remember my little blade marks there where I accidentally plunged the blade a little too deep. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of those while we're at it. Why not? So, uh, I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if you've ever tried it or not, but there's nothing that says that you can't wipe this stuff on with your fingers as long as your hands are clean, right? Uh, I recommend a glove, something like that. I should have put one on, but I didn't. But yeah, you could get in there and kind of wipe this stuff in there with your fingers. Hell, I've used acid brushes. That works pretty good, actually. I wish I had one right now. I'm out. But this will get us by, that's for sure. Just work that down in there, man. Get it nice and thoroughly coated down in that hole. Because remember, down in that hole is the spray foam that we used. Remember? You might have to get a little creative here. Watch this. I'm going to switch fingers. Get my skinny finger in there. <laughs> that ought to work. Smooth it up best you can. The smoother it is, the less sanding we will have to come back and do at the end of this deal. So, I will keep doing this. We'll get some more. We'll get it all the way down through here. Now, if you're new to the videos, uh, this is all going to get a vinyl wrap when we're done with, uh, I believe, like a little foam cushion under it. Really, really thin cushion. So, if there are any kind of little tiny imperfection in this, you won't see them. I'm just sticking with my block out here on the flat surfaces. I don't want to be in here hand sanding. I don't want to take any chances on getting any kind of little whoop de woos in there. I want it to stay nice and flat. I want to keep my edges nice and straight. So, I will continue on with the block through here. We'll get in here like this. This is exactly what I did on the other side, man. We'll get in here and we'll work it like this. Back and forth. You know, we'll come up from this way. Same thing. We'll get in there and we'll work all of that nice. Keep it straight all the way through. 
Because this will keep you from getting all those weird little, I mean, you could, you could picture that, right? If you're running down through here by hand, not using a block, you're asking for trouble, man. We, we ain't doing that. We want it to, we want it to be nice and straight, just like this side. And this is how you do it, man. Use those blocks. Try not to use your fingers as much as possible. All right, so I've got this area in here worked out pretty good so far. We will need to wipe a little more filler in there. I got some craters that are gonna to need to get filled up. Not a big deal to be expected. Uh, when I get into these corners, I wanna kinda of round all of this area out, kinda of slope it back a little bit like the other side. And I'm just gonna take some sandpaper. This is just some 60 grit here. If we need to, we'll switch up to some 40 grit or something. Just roll it up and we're just gonna work it all around in this area till we get it looking just like the other side. Another little trick you can do is keep your little air hose, keep it handy, and then come in. Just keep your sandpaper clean so you don't clog it up with your filler. And you'll sand all of this out so much quicker that way. Uh, wear a respirator or something. I'm not wearing one at the moment just so I can talk to you guys, but uh, generally I kick a fan on behind me to keep this stuff blowed away from me. But a respirator, or at least a mask of some sort, a dust mask, would definitely help you out here. I want to kind of round this a little more. Say so we got kind of a corner going here. We don't want that. I want to kind of round this out so that it matches this side. See how this side's kind of rounded on the end. We just don't got that on this side yet. But we could take a shortcut. I got this guy here. This thing's working awesome. So yeah, we'll turn it on the lowest setting so it don't get away from us. I don't want to take off too much material and have to go add more in. I mean, if we do, not the end of the world. I'll keep reminding you guys of that, but it is more work. So anyway, uh, I like to kind of anchor it with my other hand here. You see what I'm doing? Give me a little more control. And I'm just going to kind of come in here and chew out a little bit of material. See if we can kind of round this off just a little bit. getting better. I'm kind of eyeballing the other one over here as I go. I wanted to show you all this here. Anytime you're trying to form your body lines, you see what we did here? We got a little bit carried away in this area and we brought the line down too far. Look at that. So now we don't have a straight line here no more. I don't like that. So let's fix it. Shouldn't be too hard to straighten out. Get this little piece of tape here and we'll start it back here where the line is good. And we'll get the tape to where it's following that line the way we want, right? Bring it on around here. And then hook back up over here where we know the line is right. And now we know this area here beyond the tape is what's got to go. Uh, I think I could do that with this here, no problem. All we got to do is just run it right along that, that spot. Trying not to sand back here where, where we're already good, so... As long as we keep it on the paint stick this is this is a paint stick if you don't know this is a paint stirring stick uh, they give these away free anytime you buy paint most usually and I got tons of these things and sometimes I like to use them as a uh, as a sanding block they work great for that so anyway and see how fast that that is almost there already just a little bit more Again, stick with your stick or your blocks on this because if I came in here with my paper like we said earlier and just started doing that, we're, we're going to end up dug out here and we're just going to have the opposite problem of what we had a minute ago. This way, look at this, we've got us a nice straight line. I do think we could go a little bit more, not a problem. Let's add our tape back. I actually didn't mean for that to come off. It just kind of popped off there when I wiped across it. Not a problem though. Maybe we can add it back in. And where'd my stick go? Here we go. Let's just take a little bit more off of that. Why not? We're already here. So I'll keep working at this when I come back here in just a second. I think we're going to have us a nice straight line through there looking exactly the way I want it to. 
cool thing about using these uh, the paint sticks is if I need to, I could chop it down and make it even shorter. I kept it kind of long because I like working through here like this. But if I needed to, I could cut a little piece right off. Simple as that. Flip it on its side. Run it through here like so. Since this has a bit of a curve to it, the stick was too long to flip on its side. But we just fixed that problem just by breaking a little piece off of it. And look, it's still long enough that I could get in here and do that. So now we got a multi-purpose tool right now. Look at that. So... We are just about there. Now I think we could peel our tape off and be good. Look at that, that looks way better. Check it out. Now the line matches all the way across. Perfect. We'll do the same thing down here when we get to it. I'm gonna keep working at this until I get this shape looking just like this shape. So this was a perfect example of what I was talking about. If you take too much off, it is not the end of the world because we can add more. I got this little spot here that I'm just not digging it. So, I'm just gonna add a little material in there. We'll hit that up here in just a few minutes and problem will be solved. Now what I could do is I could just keep sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding and keep just working that out till I get it the way I want it. Or I could just save myself probably about 30 minutes and just hit that. Wait a few minutes while we go over here and work this side for a little bit and then we'll come back to this side and problem will be solved. Yeah, it's ready now. Let's hit it. Should be able to knock it down really quick. Something like that there. All right, that takes care of up here. Now we just need to get in here. Let's find my round piece again. Remember this guy, this has been really handy. Just like to re-roll it each time, get it tight, because you know it tries to come undone every time you set it down. Not a big deal. We've actually got it trained now, it rolls up really easy. Now we can pick up where we left off earlier. Just kind of roll this around this area. Shouldn't take very long because I didn't let the mud get completely hardened up. I left it where it's just slightly soft, just enough that you can sand it and it won't clog up your paper. That's kind of the sweet spot. If you catch it just right, you can work this stuff like butter. Something like that there. So yeah, perfect example of how you could get a little carried away, get your shape off, but man, you just come right back with a little more filler, a little more sanding, a few minutes and you're back to good again. So same thing all over again. We'll get it all sanded down, smoothed up, and if there are any imperfections at that point, they'll be so minor that uh, all we gotta do is hit it with some glazing putty. That stuff is really thin, it dries real fast, so easy to work with, and I'll show you that here in just a few minutes. Here's our glazing putty here. Uh, this is called Dynatron. Uh, it's the same thing as Nitro Stand, which is probably what most of you guys remember using. And I'm uh, just, Take a little tiny amounts of it here and put it in the little spot you need to put it in. Got me a little spot I wanna fix right up inside of here. And man, I mean, you wanna do this stuff so thin that usually I won't even use a spreader. I will use a razor blade to wipe it on. Yeah, when you're doing stuff like this, these little tiny pinholes, man, you just take your razor blade, wipe it on, look at that, you wipe, the, uh, the excess of it off and when you come through I mean you barely touch out the piece of sandpaper and you're done no more pinhole and don't have to do a bunch of sanding either and yeah, just like that man it works really well we don't have to get carried away on this because we're getting we're covering it with vinyl but if we were painting this is definitely a must do step so I mean really all I got left to do is just kind of come through here kind of round off my edges I don't want none of these edges to be sharp so just kind of round them off really easy I mean it's nothing to it just kind of roll over the edge especially on these really long ones don't get too carried away I did switch up my grit I'm using a finer grit I'm not using the uh, the uh, 60 grit or the 80 the, the 40 grit or any of that we are using 
uh, 80 grit right now. And I, on this particular project, I think 80 grit's all we're really gonna have to go on. I think we'll be good. I think we could put our vinyl on after that. That's turning out pretty good, look at that. So at this point, I'm just working some 80 grit sandpaper down in all of these little grooves and stuff. You guys remember this thing's got body lines all over it. Well, we got to get down into all those little grooves and stuff with our sandpaper. So that's what I'm doing now. I've also got some red scotch bright. Kind of get around all the, all the little corners and stuff. Want all that cleaned up really nice. We want it all scuffed down in here where the emblem goes. All of that, man. We got to get this thing good all the way around. So that's all I'm doing right now. Uh, the vents, man. Check them out. I think, I think that's going to get it, man. We got two vents, both sides match. Uh, everything's looking pretty uniform, smooth. We got our edges all dialed in. I mean, I don't know what else we could do with them. That's as good as it's getting from this guy. So all I'm doing, like I said, going over the whole thing with some 80 grit, a little bit of red scotch bright. We're gonna clean it up really, really good. So at this point, I think we'll open up the doors, blow all the dust out of here, and we're gonna remake our uh, work area, lay some new paper down, just clean it up a bit. Well, okay, so that's more like it. Uh, you know, you gotta clean up before you uh, start the next phase, man. We had all that dust flying around in here. We don't want that when it comes time to start running our glue and all of that, so. Yeah, so at this point, I'm just kinda hitting it up with the glass cleaner. I've even got me a spray bottle full of water here. I'm just kinda going along with the scotch bright. I'm just going through here and cleaning this thing up really, really good. Uh, that glass cleaner, that Sprayway glass cleaner, unsponsored content, but I've been using it for years. It works really good for cleaning all the uh, fingerprints and and uh, just all the grime, everything off of this that has been accumulating over the years. And that way our glue will have a way better chance of sticking. So I'm just gonna get all down in the grooves We'll come through here and just kind of clean all of this up. You see how all that comes off of there? Whoa. So here is our backing. We're gonna use this kind of, it's really thin, and I'm gonna put this on first as a pad, you know? And then we'll put the vinyl on over this. I wanna show you all how thin it is. If we get it all out here. There we go, can y'all see that? That is pretty thin stuff. I think we could get it all, you know, put it on this whole thing. We'll glue it down first, and then we'll come back and put the vinyl over the top of that. So yeah, we'll get this all spread out here. I think we'll probably put it around, put it like this, this right here. Using Gorilla Glue, heavy duty stuff. Man, this stuff is supposed to be really awesome. I think we're ready. It's been a few minutes. We ought to be good to go there. You see there, that's where I taped on the end. Just kind of help hold it in position. That way we'll be kind of in the, in the right vicinity here. I'm just gonna start right here in the middle and work my way back. Get this back over here. That's how you keep control of it is this, is uh, roll it back slowly, you know? Don't just let it go. And we'll just come through here and keep smoothing it out really nice. It's laying down good. We'll kind of stretch this really, really gently. I'm just kind of pushing down in there. What I'll do is I'll cut a slot out in it. That'll help it go down in there a little bit more. But this stuff does have some stretch to it. Not a lot, but enough to go down into stuff like that. It shouldn't be a problem. We'll just work it little by little, kind of stretching it in there, you know. We can fold this back over now that that other area, the area we just now did is already, I mean, it's set up, it ain't going nowhere. 
So now we can fold this back over and start our next section. You know, it's really easy. All you're going to do is roll it back to the point where it's stuck. You see what I'm saying? Because, I mean, once you look from there on, I mean, it's glued. So we can leave that alone. We'll straighten our, our piece out just a little bit. And now we can start gluing. I figure by the time we spray it down to probably about this much of it is all we're going to have to do. Let it set up for a few minutes. And then we can roll that over onto itself. So that's the part right here where I'm expecting trouble. We'll see how it goes. Let me get up in behind here. I want to get down in that deep area. Let's just bring this on over. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at here. Got ourselves a wrinkle. It's all right. That's okay. If you have to, pull it back loose. Boy, she's on there. This is a disaster, y'all. This didn't work out at all. You know, I thought this stuff would have a little more stretch to it, and it just doesn't really hardly have any stretch at all. And it, it was working. It was working fine, but I made the mistake of letting it pinch itself together, right? As soon as it did that, man, there was no pulling it back apart. I, I had a permanent wrinkle. So I uh, peeled it back off and man, what a mess. That was probably the worst thing I could have done. I don't really know. Look at this. Oh God. I don't know, man. That was bad. I should not have done that. Uh, when it came to going inside of here, I had it going on. It was working fine. It was stretching in there to the contour. And uh, like I said, when I pushed it, it pinched the material together and I ended up with a wrinkle right here that would not go away no matter how much I tried to stretch it back out I was stuck with it and that was just there's no way we could live with that but peeling that back off of there has created a big mess and I'm not sure I'm, I'm trying to use sandpaper to try to kind of knock some of this stuff back down yeah I've got my 60 grit back out and I'm just trying to kind of go through here and get some of this stuff back off of here I tried my acetone and it helped a little bit, but it would only work so well. Maybe I'll get it back out with some steel wool or something. See if we can't kind of break that stuff loose, man. That Gorilla Glue is really holding up. <laughs> it's not helping me in this situation. But uh, I don't know, man. We'll figure it out. Let's see if I can get some of this crap off of here. You know, I've done this one other time, and that is it. And I didn't use... This stuff is stuck to me. I didn't use any of this foam back you know i just put the vinyl right on there and it was fine so i think that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to forget about that you know i've got enough left over to try it again and it, i think probably what would be smart is to probably start in that area first you know do the do the deep spot first for future reference i don't know man like i said i'm not an upholstery guy well, now that we got that all cleaned up and straightened out, uh, let's get our vinyl out. Here we go. I wanted to show you guys this stuff. So yeah, here's our vinyl. I wanted to show you guys just how stretchy this stuff is. So you can see the stuff here. Look, see how stretchy it is? Man, that is really stretchy and it stretches both directions. What they call a four-way stretch, man. We shouldn't have any problem getting this stuff down in all the little nooks and crannies and the weird contours. All those dang body lines, man. So this ought to work out all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this on over. We're gonna cut us out a piece. I tried cutting this with a pair of scissors and I guess my scissors are just too dull. So I switched over to the razor blade. Seems to be working really good. So I've gone ahead, taken a few minutes to kind of get everything all set up, kind of get everything staged the way it's supposed to go. Got me a heat gun handy. I honestly don't see myself needing that, man. That stuff is so stretchy. We ought to be able to get it all down inside of these, these little recessed areas and all the contours, body lines, everything. We shouldn't have an issue at all. And it's thick enough that I think it'll be enough to hide in case there are any kind of little imperfections here and there. It should hide them, no problem. But hey, man, sometimes there ain't nothing to it but to do it. So let's just try it out. Uh, we'll start right out here first and work our way out from there. 
you want to be able to actually touch the glue and not have it even be sticky, just barely even tacky. And that's what we got now. At that point, you can come in and uh, fold this stuff over on itself. Let's give it a shot. We'll start in the middle here. Let's, uh, let's not mess up our position. Let's get that to stay where it, right where it needs to be. I want to start right here in the middle, just like that. I'll tell you what, this is the part where a second set of hands would really be helpful. So as you can see, just rolling this out little by little across here. Trying to get it to a point where I can kind of just flip it over, right? <laughs> Trying to get through this. This is tedious. Uh, and I'll tell you what, man, if I ain't earned your you hitting the old subscribe button yet, man, I don't know what will, because I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, y'all. So what I've done is I went ahead and let that section dry. Uh, it's probably been like a good 20 minutes, so it's locked in. It ain't going anywhere. Now we can get in and kind of start stretching on stuff and not have to worry about moving anything around. It should stay put. So I think at this point, I want to kind of focus in on this area here. Blue's feeling pretty tacky, but maybe we start giving it a shot. Start rolling this down just a little bit. Kind of start stretching it. Might go ahead and get the heat gun out. Remember, we got it handy. No sense in not using it, right? Just want to get in here, just kind of stretch some of this out. Yeah, that makes it just a little more pliable, man. I mean, need all the help we can get, right? Try not to, like, stick your fingernails in it. That wouldn't be good. There we go. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. It's not as great as I was hoping, but it's all right. It's a hundred times better than what it was. I'll promise you that. This is where everything is going to go wrong. <laughs> if it indeed is going to go wrong, this is where it's going to happen, and I promise you. So let's work this down in here as best we can. I mean, it's going, and not a wrinkle yet. Well, my damn GoPro battery went dead, so I put it on the charger and went in the house for a little bit, came back out thinking we were just gonna pick up right where we left off, and look what I came out to, man. This is a disaster. Yeah, we've all seen that before, haven't we? Man, dang it, I had that in there all nice. It was looking good. Uh, the rest of it looks all right. I mean, check it out. It's not so bad. I don't mind, we'd still have to address this, you know, probably heat gun, you know, push it down in there and all that, but uh, clearly that's not going to work, man. I guess we're starting over, y'all, I don't know. Again, I don't know any other way to fix this other than to start all over for the second time. I mean, it wouldn't matter if you put heat on that or not. There's no adhesive left, it's just, it's pulled loose, so that's it. I don't know, man. I mean, I've heard people like using a syringe and then poking a hole and injecting. Man, I'm not doing any of that. I'm going to start all over, I guess. Lesson learned. I guess we're just going to have to start in this section and work our way out, right? I, I, that's it. That's, that, that's the lesson we've learned here. It only took us half a dozen tries to figure it out, but whatever. Whatever, man. Man, I had this stuff all wrapped around the bottom here. Look at this. Check all that out, man. I wrapped it all the way, all the way around, poked it through the bolt holes. I mean, this stuff wasn't going to go anywhere. But unfortunately, I guess we just pulled it too tight in that area. So this stuff does have some good stretch to it, but I don't know. I guess our glue didn't have enough hold or we just... Kind of went beyond its limitations, I guess. I don't really know. Whatever, dude. We're, we're going to go again. I told you guys I was no upholsterer. This is a learning experience for me. As well as it may be for some of y'all. I don't know. You guys are definitely learning what not to do. Go ahead and flip this over. Finish peeling all this off.
So here we go again. I'll get in here and clean off some of the glue residue. See if we can't sand some of it down. We'll get it all cleaned up all over again. I'm not really impressed with that glue either, to be honest with you. I wonder if we should switch that up as well. Maybe I need to make a trip to the store. See if we can't get some better glue, man, because that kind of sucks. Doesn't seem like it has quite enough hold, to be honest. I'm not blaming the glue, by the way. Uh, that was my mistake. I should have kind of went into this contour first and then stretched out past that, I do believe. This was a rookie mistake, and I will take full responsibility. Full <laughs> Here, I think we, we just went too much stretch, put a little too much tension on the material, and then it just came loose afterwards. So it's kind of a, uh, a, a user error, you know? So anyway, uh, I think we could do better. And luckily I bought more material. This material is not expensive at all. Uh, I got several yards of it for like 40 bucks. So it turned out to be enough to do the dash twice. Uh, I don't think we'll get a third round out of it. So uh, we gotta make this next one count. I think we've learned a lot though. We've learned a lot. Screwing around with that, that padding we was trying to mess with and then now this. I think we've learned enough. We could get in there and get it done on this next try. Fingers crossed. That's what we're gonna go for, man. Let's give it a shot. I do think I'm gonna try some different glue though. All right, so I've got all this cleaned off, and I'm telling you right now, man, no more Mr. Nice Guy, dude. Let's get this on here once and for all. I'm tired of messing with it. Got it in position there. I'm gonna try a little different, a little different than I did last time. We're gonna start right here in the middle and work our way out. I'm pretty dang sure that's where we're screwing up. So at this point, I think we could just fold this back just like this. So I'm pretty sure that's where we're messing up. We're trying to go from this way forward. And I think we should be going from one side over to the other. Seems like it would make a lot more sense to me. I don't know, what do y'all think, man? Are we onto something here? I probably should have just went in and watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I took this for granted. I thought this was gonna be easy. I thought this stuff with the four way stretch and all of that, we weren't gonna have any issues at all. And here we are. I wanted to show y'all something kind of funny. I did switch up the glue. We were using that Gorilla Glue. At first, I'm just gonna go back to what I know. Nothing against that Gorilla Glue. I think it was probably just fine. But uh, I know this stuff here, man. I've been using this stuff for years. I use it on headliners and everything, and I've never had an issue with it. But check this out. This stuff did go up. Uh, it was, I think, around $13 for a bottle, or uh, for a can. And uh, now it's like over $16, $17. And uh, check out this new can design, man. All nice and streamlined compared to the old style. This was the last can that I bought. Check it out, man. Y'all notice anything different? Look at this, man. 17.6 ounces, 14.6 ounces on the new stuff. Smaller can, $3 more. Way to go, man. This is awesome, right? Man, they keep this up. We're going to get priced out of the dang DIY budget <laughs> game, you know? I mean, we're in here doing this stuff on the cheap, man. And even the cheap ain't cheap no more. Anyway, as usual with any glue, you're gonna shake the crap out of it, man. Shake it up for a good minute. Try to keep it, you know, if your shop's a little bit chilly, keep this stuff in the house and then bring it out with you when you're ready to go. That's what I did. And uh, so we're gonna get started here. See, I like this stuff, man. It covers so much better. The other stuff was like a, a mist, you know, when it comes out. And then this stuff here kind of comes out really strong. Check it out. Yeah, you see here how this is this is kind of stringy. I like it a lot better. It covers a lot better and you can really see it go on. So uh, same situation as before. You got to let it tack up to where you can actually touch it and it's just slightly sticky. You don't want it to be stringy and you don't want it to be slimy or any of that. Let it tack up. So let's give it a few minutes. All right, dare we try this again? All right, so I'm just going to slowly roll this back over on itself. The main thing I got to keep track of is to make sure that my overhang stays out here because we definitely don't want to fall short on this. That would be freaking terrible. So I want to keep an eye on that. That's the main part. We got plenty on this end too, so I think we'll be okay. Let's just kind of roll this over. Okay, so here we go. Let's get started. This seems like the only way to go is to just get in here and uh, start in this deeper section some of you guys are like, duh. Well, sometimes you just gotta figure things out.
got this one little spot here that has the glue so we don't really have to worry about like anything else getting stuck you know and that gives us time to, to come in here and work this little spot try to get it down into its little its little body lines and stuff All right Yeah, I think this will be so much better doing it this way. That way we don't have all that tension pulling out of this area. I have a feeling that was a rookie mistake. Starting out in the middle like that, right? Rookie mistake. Oh well, at least we know now, right? Take this on down a little bit. And that's about it. That's where that's where we stopped at, right in there. Now I want to kind of work this down into this body line a little bit. Just right here, that's where that's the first little body line right there that actually has glue in it. From then on, we don't have glue on both sides yet, so we don't have to worry about none of it getting stuck. We could just peel back, add some more glue, and just work on out from the middle now that we got look, man, we got it, y'all. We got the middle section. This is by far the hardest part, no doubt about it. And we got it, look at this. We got it in there, man. No wrinkles, nothing crazy going on. We got this started down into it, its body line here. All right, now this little spot was the only spot that had glue. So now we can just flip it over and work our way out, right? But before I do that, I wanna let this spot set up a little bit because we're gonna be kind of stretching it over this contoured area and I don't want it to be pulling apart. So I need this area to set up first. So let's just do that. Let's give it a few minutes and then we'll start peeling it back, adding some more and just moving on. Something else you might do, now would be a really good time to make sure that you didn't upset the position. You know what I'm saying? Remember, we had very little left. I mean, we are just right there at having enough to uh, cover this thing now. And uh, especially up here, remember I pointed that out earlier, but look, everything's still, there's the edge. We got plenty enough to roll over. Everything's still in the right spot. We got enough on the end here and we've got enough over on this end too. So that has to go all the way down to there and wrap around. So we're doing good, man. Everything is still in the right spot. Let's just give it a few minutes, like I said, to set up and then we'll start stretching. So I've let this set up for a little bit now. I'm gonna try something here. Uh, I have like a little triangle spot here that I'm thinking needs to be my next spot to put the uh, adhesive on. So what I wanna do is I wanna kind of fold back right to here. Check it out, right there. I'm gonna put a little mark on there, okay? And then when I come back to this, what I wanna do is I'm just literally gonna draw that area that I want to do next. No, it's kind of hard to see, but look, I'm going to draw the area right here. That's this. See what I'm saying? A little triangle. That's this spot. Uh, that's all I want to hit right now. Let's try it out, see what it does. Give our glue another little shake. You want to kind of shake it periodically as you go through this. Uh, here we go, just right here. Kind of hold your can back a little ways. I swear it's like less is more when it comes to the glue. Right there, that's all we're gonna do. That's our little triangle, that's our little triangle. Let's let this set up like usual, and then we'll come back and try to roll it out over the, do a little stretching, whatever we gotta do. Here we go, let's roll that up through here. I'm trying to get this set up to where there's just zero tension, you know? I don't want anything pulling on this area, like at all, really, if I can get away with it. So far, so good. Just gonna roll this right up here. Just keep all of this material in this area relaxed, man. No craziness, nothing pulling on it. Man, that is so much better. Dude, why didn't we do this the first time? Man, look how much nicer that's working out, y'all. This is what we should have did in the first place, all right? Okay, so while we let that set, again, we wanna let it sit before we start stretching on it. Let's move over to the other side. Peel this back. 
And we'll do the same thing, just like a minute ago. We'll get our next spot ready. And remember, the whole time that we're doing this, we're, we're keeping track over here to make sure that, that we uh, don't run out. We'll make sure that stays hanging over the edge, which we're kind of locked into place. I think we'll be okay. So anyway, let's get this rolled back just a bit. We want to get back to where it's actually stuck, and then we will start the gluing again. Here we go, run a little bit of glue. We're not gonna go real far. Okay, just a few inches at a time. Be good enough, man. I'm I'm scared to death, y'all. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is it. If it don't work this time, we're throwing it in the trash. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're gonna buy more material and keep going until we get it, and it's gonna get kind of ridiculous if we have to keep going from here. Hopefully, this is it. We'll see. Wish me luck. All right, same situation as before. Just want the uh, glue to kind of set up for a few minutes, and then we can start kind of rolling it out. What I want to do is I want to roll it over this midsection first, and then I want to take, I got this, got this little stick here. We use this a lot for trim and working around rubber moldings and things like that. It works pretty good, it's just plastic, and I'll take you know, paper towel, wrap it around it. And I will use that to kind of run along these body lines to kind of work this material down in there. Should work out okay. About to get it rolled to the edge of our glue there. Let's see, kind of fold this out. Remember, we can fold it out once we get past our glue because nothing's gonna stick out past that, right? So this is what I was talking about, you know. I'm gonna take this stick here, see if I can double up my uh, paper towel. Give it a little protection and get in there and just kind of work this down into the trim or into the body line rather. And then we can work out from there, right? Yeah, something like that. There we go. Just want to get it all the way down in there. And I'm trying to do it in its relaxed state so that we're not trying to stretch it down into the uh, body lines because. It's just going to pop right back out again. Remember, you know, if this stuff has too much tension on it, it doesn't like it. You know, even though it's got the stretch, you know, you, you can go beyond its limitations just like we did earlier. And I don't want that problem again. We've, we've learned our lesson, y'all. That's how that's what we do here, man. We make mistakes, but we learn from them. We don't just turn around and repeat them again. And I think we're getting it, man. I'm So far, I'm happy. And don't forget, you can always break out the heat gun. That definitely makes it way more pliable. I mean, it's pretty stretchy on its own, but man, you hit it with that heat, you really get it down into all those little crevices. Here we go. Now with this glue, it's not like that Gorilla Glue was. The Gorilla Glue, we've kind of used liberally. This glue, not so much. Less is more, it seems like, with this glue. So uh, let's see where that gets us. Here we go. The glue has been setting up for a few minutes now. Let's get this back over here where it belongs, and then we can probably I believe we can take and do a little bit of a little bit of stretching right here. See a little wrinkle. Yeah, a little wrinkle was trying to form right there. I don't think so, buddy. You ain't welcome here. Here we go. Let's see. Just keep kind of rolling your wrinkles out, stretching them out. I'm not gonna get too crazy with my stretching this time. Okay. We learned our lesson on that. I can't I can't say it enough. <laughs> I definitely learned my lesson on that. So that's what a lot of this stuff is, man. It's a learning process. Dude, I'm I'm way out of my element on this stuff on, on upholstery. You know, this right here is just not something that I've done enough to get good at. You know? And to do it with you guys watching, not gonna lie, not gonna lie, a little stressful. That's fine though, who cares? 
whatever, man. We all got to learn sometime. I can't afford to have this done. I heard it's very pricey. And you get what you pay for, kind of like the paint and body business. Uh, you want a good upholstery guy, it's going to cost you. And I, I just ain't got it like that. So, I am forced to try to figure things out sometimes. And it's just not pretty. You know, when you first start it, sometimes it's just not pretty, man. And that's why I bought so much material. I already knew, man. I knew it was coming. But hey, would you look at that? We made it through another really difficult area with no wrinkles, man. Nice. It's all staying stuck down. So we could come over here and do this side again. And that's what we're going to do through this whole thing. We're just going to bounce back and forth, stretching out from the middle. Uh, <laughs> I think this is the way to go. It seems like it anyway. We're going to come over here. About the same six inch pass. There we go. That's it. That's all I'm doing. So if you're wondering how much time I give on the glue for it to set up, about three or four minutes. It's about 60-ish degrees outside right now, Fahrenheit. Uh, so it's not taking a whole lot of time. But if it's a hot summer day, you just damn near be able to stick it on there right after you spray it. Uh, but I am giving it about three or four minutes. And I even take my heat gun. I've been, I've been doing this off camera. And I just kind of go over it just really lightly just to give it a, give it a little extra. And then by then it's good to go. We can come in here and start rolling this over on itself like we've been doing. And again, you can take your heat gun, just barely run it over those body lines. And even though I'm really not having any trouble getting the material down in there, it just seems like it just kind of helps it. Just kind of smooth it out. Just run your finger down in there. Yeah, man, I'm digging this. This is so much better than before. So with that piece done, obviously, I think we need to come over here, work on this area, just keep kind of stretching it out that way. All right, try not to leave too much behind. I'm just trying to kind of take a little bit with me at a time. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in just right here, do my next pass. I'm gonna make sure you roll it back far enough don't want to miss don't want to miss anything so let me get this back a little further here there there we go something like that okay and the way I'm doing it is it's smart to come over this way and spray your glue that way the glue is hitting that edge and you're not leaving anything behind because if you roll this over and there's no glue right there you're gonna have a spot that's not stuck down and that's not gonna be cool you're gonna hate that so like I said, man, just a quick little pass right through there like that. Now that we've hit that edge, I could come back over there, over here and just barely, I just want a little bit. I don't want this pass to be very, very big. I want it to be kind of a little short pass. So we're gonna do a little, little bit of stretching on this part. Remember, less is more. You gotta remember that. Do some more stretching. Get creative here. You can see why it's so important to do such small little areas at a time because it is really, really easy to get a wrinkle. Uh, now, I don't want to go down in to my vents just yet. The defroster vents, not yet. I'm gonna save that for a little bit later. Okay, I think that's gonna do it on that section. So yeah, I think what I want to do is I want to get more of this area out here glued before we ever even try to go down into those vents. All right, here we go, next section. I'm 
All right, another good one. There we go. Still no wrinkles. That's awesome, man. I'm loving this so far. Boy, I was scared there for a long while. I really, I thought we were gonna have to give up and figure something else out. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you gotta know your limitations, right? And I was right there. Here we go, another section. Let's see what we can do here. Get that going on there. There we go, let's roll, roll that back out. Whoa, oh, oh, slow down. Good grief. There we go, okay, yeah. Whoa. Tell you what, just out of nowhere, man, the wrinkles will just pop up on you. So I snuck ahead just a little bit while you guys weren't looking. Uh, we pretty much made it all the way across and we're just about to start on our vents. I got this one little spot left over here. You can see where I, can, can you see that? You see that magic marker? That is a line where I've actually outlined this part. See, that way I know exactly where to spray my uh, next little bit of glue. It's gonna be this little spot right here. And that's what's drawn on the other side. That can kind of help you when you're flipping this stuff around and you get kind of lost. Next thing you know, you're spraying glue on a part that you didn't really want glue on. Maybe a section you wasn't quite ready for just yet. And that stuff could kind of mess you up. And not to mention, you could be wasting glue. We don't want that either. So, there we go, man. Got just what we need sprayed. A little more there for good measure. Let's let that sit up a minute. And we'll stick it. And then we're going to come over here and start our vents. All right, here we go. My dang GoPro battery is about to go dead on me. I bought a new GoPro, as some of you guys are aware of. We went from a GoPro, what is it, an 8 to a 9. And I, I like this 9. It's really great. But the only problem is, is my batteries don't interchange with the 8. So now we got to get new batteries for a 9. Really cool, right? Thanks, GoPro. Thanks for nothing. Uh, they do that to us every time. You know, anytime we upgrade, we got to upgrade the batteries and chargers and everything. It's really cool of them. I appreciate that GoPro. But whatever. Uh, we're making do. So every once in a while, I got to stop and go charge a battery and then come back. And it makes everything take 10 times as long. But that's kind of what we're working with here. Just kind of working this down into the defroster vents now. This is... A little bit tricky, that's for sure, but you just want to push it down in there basically before you let it get stuck to the other side, you know what I'm saying? That way that uh, it can kind of go down in there and not have to stretch it so much. It's like when we did the body lines. It's working out. It's, it's coming together. It's really tedious. I don't know of any other thing to tell you. Just go really, really slow. I know I say that a lot, man, but seriously, especially if you're like me and you're just not used to doing this, that's the best thing you could do is just slow it down. About to have worked ourselves all the way across here finally. That's nice. Let's get this down into the where the that VIN number goes. Heat it up with just a little bit of heat. Can you push that right down in there? There we go. Just kind of want to work it all the way around inside there. That's the way it was with those vents too. A little bit of a pain. But man, I tell you, if you don't take your time to work it down into these little areas, before you just stretch it right over the top, man, you are just begging for trouble. It takes a little bit to get used to. But, you know, you just take your heat as you go and it'll help you. Just kind of working that down in there. I'm gonna get it nice, push down in there right in all the corners. Something like that there, that's looking pretty good. Let's work out all of our wrinkles, make sure we don't have any wrinkles all the way up to the edge here. There we go. Roll all that under, all right. All that's really left now is to come across here, you know, trim all of that out and wrap it around on the sides here. Man, we just about got it whipped. 
we'll get this part covered and then we'll trim out around the instrument panel where that goes step back and take a look at it man it's been a journey hasn't it yep we're good to go let's go ahead and roll this on over the last little bit here y'all stretch all this down get all these wrinkles chased out of it we ought to be good to go after that I think we can come through here and trim all this off now don't need it no more and just roll this right underneath here it's gonna stick really nice looking good looking really good so man I'll tell you what we are coming to the tail end of this deal and I like to say it was fun, <laughs> but it was not. It's not so bad. So there it is, man. That's two weekends of spare time messing around. And what did we end up with? Uh, at least, I'd say probably about 150 bucks altogether. Uh, that's because I had to buy an extra can of glue. That's my own fault. It's because I screwed up and had to start over. Uh, if it wasn't for that, it would have been a little bit cheaper. Also, I bought foam padding that I didn't need. So that was a little, that was only like, I don't know, eight bucks. So not a big deal. But anyway, I did spend a little money. I didn't have to, but that was my own fault. This was a learning experience after all. I don't know, man. We did okay. Um, <laughs> we had some, some pretty big hiccups. That's for sure. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It was a, it was a lot of work. Um, I could always go and try it again if I if I can't live with it if I don't think it's good enough. Uh, hell, after you do this ten times, you ought to be you ought to be pretty decent at it, right? <laughs> and if that's what it takes, that's what I'll do. I I think it's okay though. I mean, look, we got everything to go down into the vents. Uh, you know, got everything going down in there like it's supposed to. So all those little deep little the deep little pockets that you got to push everything down into, it's all there. All of our body lines, they're all there. You know, we got this little spot here. Our emblem's going to go in there. Uh, around on the sides over here. Look, man, everything's wrapped around just like it's supposed to. And like I showed you a minute ago, it's wrapped around the back side as well. So I think we're good to go, man. Let's see if we can get the light to hit it just right. It kind of gives it a little bit of a textury look to it. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just something I can see in person. I like it. I think it's going to work just fine. I'm digging it, man. So I'll go ahead and get this thing reinstalled. I won't bore you guys with all of that. I already showed you how they come out. You don't need to see it going back in, right? Uh, we're going to get right back on the interior on the next video. I want to get the headliner in, and I want to get the floor coated with some uh, bed liner coating. I already bought some more. We're going to coat the entire floor, and we're going to coat the underside of the roof as well. You guys remember we welded those panels up on the bottom side of that roof to help plug up all those rust holes. And uh, so I want to get in there and do a whole coating of the bed liner material on the bottom side of the roof. And like I said, the floor as well. And then we get to put our brand new carpet in. So man, brand new carpet combined with a new dash. Uh, I'm thinking about spraying that headliner. You see, y'all see the headliner over there hanging up. Uh, it's green and I thought about painting it black, man. You guys leave me a comment. What do y'all think? Maybe a satin black headliner to match the dashboard. I thought it would be kind of good to kind of, you know, break up some of the green. It's got a lot of green in there, y'all. I don't mind the green, but I wouldn't mind having it kind of broke up with some black pieces here and there. I think it would look really good. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Don't forget my Facebook and my Instagram, Weird Beard on Facebook and Instagram. That way you get your, your video notification in case YouTube doesn't notify you. That way you'll always know when I put out a brand new video. So anyway, I'm going to get on out of here, you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.